Hi, welcome to the latest edition of TEC2. My name is Bill Channel. I'm one of the hydronics product managers with TEC and HVAC Solutions. And today we're going to be discussing the programming of the high efficiency IBC, HC, and DC series boilers. Setting the programming settings. Just one quick notice. This is the this boiler here has the uh, the shipping packaging on it. Once you peel that sticker off, it has a nice stainless finish like we have here on this other model. So, without much further ado, let's get into the programming. All right, as you see here, we'll explain what each of the buttons do and the, and the indicator lights, and then we'll get into the programming. So, beginning from the bar left, we have our power button. Um, as you'll see here right now, there is no indicator light on, on the top indicating we have power to the unit, but the boiler itself is not powered on. I'll get back to that in a minute. This next button is an indicator of whether we are using space heating or if we're doing hot water. So when you're, when you've got, uh, when you're doing heating, you'll want to have that, that top light lit. The plus and minus buttons will be adjustments for whatever we've got displayed here, whether it's temperatures or, or setting numbers. So we'll use those to, to adjust things. Here we have a choice between uh, Fahrenheit or Celsius. Um, when you change it to Celsius, uh, it actually goes metric, so your pressure readings and everything will show in bar, as opposed to here we're in PSI, as you see is 16P. This next button right here has a couple of different meanings. When we're using a DC combi boiler, the, and we have this individual light on on the top, that is what we call an eco mode. And what the eco mode does is it maintains the block warm for domestic water, and it learns the last three days what your usage has been. So for example, if you're up at five o'clock in the morning and you're using showers until eight, it will maintain a warm block, but then by nine o'clock, it's allowed the block to cool off. And it'll, do, it'll continue to do that based on your last three days. If we have the bottom light lit on, it will maintain a warm block uh, all day long. Um, and if both lights are off, then the block is just cool and just heats up whenever there's a call for on-demand water. If we're in a heating only mode, the choice, the top light, you cannot turn on the top light but the bottom light needs to be lit if you are using an indirect hot water heater, which is attached, uh, attached to the unit. Um, you'll, um, uh, we'll talk more about indirect hot water heaters in a little bit. The next button, or the wrench button, or the service button, is, uh, as we get into the programming, uh, becomes kind of like your enter button, if you will, um, is used. And then this is the reset button. When we finish doing all of our programming, we'll hit the reset button and we'll accept all of our changes. Um, the light above the reset button, um, if it's blinking, it gives you an indicator that there's a fault and you'll have a fault code on the display. Before we get into the programming, I wanted to point something out to you. I mentioned a little bit earlier that the boiler is powered, but it is actually not turned on. And the display looks like the boiler is turned on. It's a little counterintuitive. When we have a display showing, for example, in this case, it says 16P, it means our, our heating system has 16 pounds of pressure in it. But the boiler is actually not turned on. So if the thermostat was made, you would get no heat. But when we press the button to turn to give the power to the boiler, and you now see this LED light up, the screen goes blank. We also indicate that we have, that we're doing Fahrenheit. Um, for our for our system and we do not have any um, uh, any special uh, hot water uh, setups on our on our boiler but right now we're ready to take a call for heat when we get a call for heat it would start showing on the displays so it's it's a little confusing the first time you go through it but once you've seen it you're good to go so now let's get into the programming and to do that we press these two buttons the reset and the service uh, button together and when we get zero, zero, once we've got that, we want to adjust this number to 15. And you'll see that in the installation manual. And you should have 
uh, you know, a, a little cutaway of this installation manual as we go through each of the settings, you'll see it on the screen as well. But uh, it'll be in section two of the installation manual. Once we get to number 15, we hit the wrench button, which again becomes like our, in, our enter button. And now we're given a choice. We've got two numbers. We've got a one on the right side, that's our parameter number, and then this is what our selection is. So looking at the parameters that you have, for example, in this case, parameter number one, the zero is a DC boiler. In this case, we have a combi boiler, so this boiler can produce both heat and on-demand hot water. Another choice that we would have would be number one, which would be an HC series, which is a heating only boiler. And not only do we have the heating only boiler, but we also have an indirect hot water heater attached to it. Okay. If we do this and we have an indirect hot water heater, we would want to tap to make sure, well, once we get set up, we want to make sure that this green light is on because if this green light is on here underneath the hot water button, that will mean that our indirect hot water heater is heating up. If it's turned off, it's kind of like a vacation mode and it turns off the water heater. So we don't keep maintain a hot water in the, in the tank until someone comes home and turns this back on. So the next choice in the options is number two, and that would be using the DC boiler in strictly an on-demand tankless water heating mode, meaning no, there'd be no space heating option at all. Option three is for a, an HC series boiler, which is a heating only boiler and no uh, hot water, uh, indirect hot water heater hooked to it. So it's strictly space heating. Option number four is where we are using the combination boiler, the DC series boiler for space heating, as well as on demand for your hot water and on that on-demand hot water loop where we have a small storage tank on it, all right? And in that circumstance, again, we need to have this LED turned on. You'll see that on here, lamp number eight. When we go to option number five, that is where we're using this combination boiler for on-demand hot water as well as a storage tank only. There's no space heating. So it's the same setup as you had with, with number four, but just no space heating. All right. Option number six is where we're doing all three things. We're using the, the combination DC boiler for space heating. We're also using it for a, a connecting it to an indirect hot water heater where we might have a large volume load. And then we also are utilizing the capabilities for the uh, on-demand hot water um, going to a sink or a shower or something like that. All right. So let's go back to what we originally had for this boiler, which is this is a, well, let's, let's call this boiler a heating only boiler because that's going to be our most common application, the HC and we're going to say that we have an indirect hot water heater attached to it. So we're gonna choose option number one, and then we press the wrench button to accept it. When we do, we notice that our parameters change and it goes to parameter number five. And parameter number five is our minimum heating curve supply water temperature. What does that mean? That means if we're using outdoor reset, which we should be, because that's code now in Illinois, for space heating, what, we, what this is, is this is the, on the warmest day where we are doing space heating, what is the water temperature? The warm, so this is the warm water temperature that we're going to be supplying. So let's assume that we're using a, a copper baseboard application, which is very typical. 93 degrees is probably too low. We want to raise that up to say 120 degrees because when it's 50 degrees outside or 60 degrees outside, we need heat, but we don't need a whole lot of heat. So say 120 degrees or so, or, or maybe even 125 would be good for that. If we were doing a radiant application, 
we might have the, the, that low end down to say 90 or 95 degrees. It depends upon what type of heat emitters you're using. Now let me talk about this boiler as it comes out of the box will have presets that are very familiar or very, very kind for um, copper baseboard systems. So it's set for a high temperature system. If you're putting it into a radiant application or even, a, even using hot water radiators, you might want to change change some of these settings that we're going to do in the next couple of steps. But in this case, we're going to set it to 125 because we've got copper baseboard. So once we've set that to 125, we press the wrench or our enter button. The next option, as you'll see, is five with a dot. And that actually is our high limit, our maximum water temperature supply. So the maximum that we can have on that is 194 degrees. Um, and for a copper baseboard system, we can leave it there. If we were doing a radiant system where we're supplying 120 degree waters to the slab, we might want to change this to say 135 or 140 so that so our, our, our limit is not quite so high and we don't damage uh, the, the floor. That's option number five dot. The next option is option six. And this is our minimum outdoor design temperature. So this is the design temperature that we say that we want to have, that we're, that we're going to use full capacity of this boiler. Right now it shows five degrees. Now we're in Chicagoland, and so there's, you know, depending on where you are, we can have it at five degrees, we see zero. Sometimes we see minus five. Some folks even believe in minus 10. Um, the colder that you make it, the, the bigger the spread on the curve that we have. So um, using five or zero is typically what we'll see in Chicagoland. Um, in this case, we will keep it at, at five. So we'll accept that. Then we go to option number seven, and that is our summer shutdown temperature. And what that means is, in this case, we've got it set at 70 degrees. So at, when the outdoor temperature sensor senses 70 degrees outside, this boiler will stop firing for space heating. If we get an on-demand, if we're in using a tankless system, or if we've got an indirect hot water heater like we do here, it will fire to heat up the indirect hot water heater, but will not get any space heating call. We press wrench. We go into option number eight. Option number eight is the internal boiler post pump purge. What that means is at the end of a call for heat, the boiler, there's an internal primary loop pump here. This will run for however many minutes after the end of the call for heat. So we've got some heat that's built up in the block. We're going to continue and run it through uh, for an extra minute. One minute is a fine setting. That's a good setting to keep. Let's keep that there. The next option is option nine. It's the same thing, but for the domestic hot water. So in this case, we have an indirect hot water heater. So at the end of a call, we've satisfied, we've warmed up that tank of hot water. We run, this, we run this pump for another minute after we're done. We turn the burner off and we take that last bit of heat out of the block. Again, a nice setting to keep. So our next option is uh, L, capital L. And what this is on the indirect hot water heaters uh, that we get from IBC, we have a temperature sensor that's in there. And when you wire that temperature sensor into the boiler here, the boiler becomes the aquastat and we control what the temperature is inside the indirect hot water heater from the boiler. What we're doing here is we're setting the high limit for that indirect hot water heater. What it means is we cannot have any, any we will not have water any higher than 140 degrees in there. So similar to what we did before, we're setting the high limit on it. We actually set our target temperature in another place. We'll show you that in just a minute or two. All right. Our next setting is L dot, and this is the the offset or the, the 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 offset temperature if we're using a tankless and a storage tank. Um, 18 degrees is the correct setting for it. We prefer that you don't change this at all. Leave it as it is, and and you'll you'll get good performance out of it. Our next option is lowercase n. 
And this is the water temperature from the boiler using the space heating water that we're sending to the indirect water heater to heat up the domestic hot water. So in this case, we're sending 170 degree water. Whenever there's a call for heat on the, on the indirect water heater, we're making 170 degree water and we're sending it to that tank. This is also a very, very good setting for it. Um, you can change it, but 170 is actually a real good number for it. Our next option is lowercase n and then that dot again. So what this is, this is when we are trying to maintain a warm block for our on-demand hot water, when we're using the DC, the combi boiler. What temperature are we maintaining that block at? Whether it's in comfort mode, meaning it's warm 24 hours a day, or if we're in eco mode where it's warm based on your last three days of use. 110 degrees is a good starting point because as soon as the, because that means the water that's in there will be at 110 degrees. And as soon as you start flowing water, it'll be sending out 110 degree water. If you get it any higher, you could perhaps be sending scalding water and, you, and, and, and uh, we don't wanna do that. So we'll leave it at 110, that's a fine setting. Our next option is capital zero dot. And what this is, is this is the space heating time delay. What that means is on a call for space heat or a call for heat, how long are we going to wait before we allow the boiler to do its thing? It should come factory set at zero uh, from the factory. Um, and typically it is, but you want to check and make sure it says zero. Otherwise, I have seen one situation where it was set at 13. So it was waiting 13 minutes before the boiler started and we were scratching our heads as to why the boiler didn't work. Um, and sudden magically it would turn on. So as you're going through zero dot, make sure that it's at zero. We accept that value. Our next option is lowercase zero. And this is kind of like the prior one, but uh, in this case, at the, end of a, uh, at the end of a call for domestic hot water, um, how long are we waiting before we go to uh, space heating. Um, again, in this in this case, leave the number at zero. Don't put a delay in there because it 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 it's it, it just going to confuse people and and that type of thing. So zero is we, these last two settings we want to make sure we have a zero. Once we're done with that, we go back to the beginning and we just loop back and we can go back through all of our settings. And once we've got these settings done. The reset button, when we press it, you'll notice that the letter P will come on. Well, you want to see that letter P because that means that any of the changes that we've made are programmed into the, into the board. If you do not see that, you, can't, you cannot be certain that you're getting all of the changes. All right, so we want to press the reset button. We see the P, and that'll go away in a second while all the changes are getting set up. And We've got our green light, green light. We're ready to go for our next call for heat. All right, we have most of our settings in the, in the boiler. Uh, now we just have two more that we need to put in. The first one is the, is the temperature, the boiler water temperature for space heating at our design temperature. Meaning when we're, in this case, we were at, I believe it was uh, five degrees at five degrees, what water temperature are we putting out to the copper baseboard? And the second setting that we need to do is, what is the target for our indirect hot water heater? So to get into that, what we need to do is we need to press our thermometer button. So we press the thermometer button for two seconds or more, and we get a flashing display. And you'll see the light is lit here. That's indicating this is for space heating. Our target temperature as it comes out of the factory is 180 degrees and that would be the temperature that we would send out to the baseboard on a, uh, uh, on a design day. So at, at five degrees outside, we're gonna be producing 180 degree water. That might be a little bit high. So let's change it and make it, say we wanna make it to 175. Okay, we've changed it. We've now set that to 175. So now we want to change our, the temperature that's in our, or we want to check the, the temperature that's in our indirect hot water heater. To do that, we press the thermometer button once again, and you'll see that our blinking light is now next to the faucet. That indicates domestic water. And here it says 
our target temperature for the indirect hot water heater is 140 degrees. If you recall, we set the high limit at 140 degrees, so we cannot maintain this at 140. We need to bring it down a little bit, so let's make it 130 degrees, because we want to try to maintain about 10 degrees between our set point and a, and a limit. All right, so we see that. Those are set. Again, just like we did before, when we, when we want to set our temperatures or changes in, we need to press the reset button and we look for that letter P. All right, we've now programmed the boiler. It's ready to go. Test it up and save the customer money. All right, so we've got the, pro the boiler set up for the HC for the heating only and a, an indirect hot water heater. Now, there, the, the series also is capable of, uh, the, the DC series boiler can be used for on-demand hot water. And there are a couple of settings that we talked about earlier in the setups, but we need to make a choice here on this screen. And the, what we have here is there are three modes that we can operate our on-demand hot water under. The first, where, the first mode is economy, which means that the block only heats up when there is a flow of water going through it. There's a, there's a, it's on demand. The next option is what we call e economy comfort, where the block learns your, your usage patterns for the last three days. And we, and then it, but it warms up in those time periods. So for example, from eight or from five o'clock to eight o'clock in the morning, and then the rest of the day it cools off and just comes on on demand. Or the third option is full comfort mode where the block stays warm 24 seven and the, the, so you'll get warmer water quicker. So the way that we select those three options is using this faucet button. Right now you'll see neither light is lit, which means we are in full economy mode, meaning the block stays cool and will come on with a with a call for or with, a, with an, uh, an opening of the faucet. By pressing the button once, we get the top light to light up and then we're in economy, comfort economy or economy comfort mode. And again, that's the one where, we, where we're learning your, your, your history for the last three days. And then if we want to go to full comfort mode, we press the button once more and that, and that green LED then drops down to the bottom one and then we're maintaining a warm block at full comfort mode. As you can guess, in full economy mode, we're using the least amount of gas. Economy comfort, we're getting some comfort in the time frame that we want, but we use a little bit more fuel. In full comfort mode, we're using more fuel um, to, uh, to get full comfort for what we want. Well, thanks for joining us here on TEC Tube um, with the programming for the IBC HC and DC boilers. My name is Bill Channel. I'm one of the Hydronics product managers. Thanks for joining us and stay tuned for more products coming on TVC2.